Hello and welcome to the Engage Brain Podcast. So we're going to talk about music, and uh, I'm going to try to ask as many more difficult questions as possible oh, uh, to try to stump Abby and Mike uh, about uh, music and stress. Uh, and so I'll start with a hopefully easy question. What got you interested in, in music? In music and stress. The music topic. and stress or music first and then stress afterwards? Um, I guess music has always been a really important part of my life, whether it's with relaxing or sports or just driving. It's around us constantly mm. and more than we know. Like we're sometimes not even conscious, like when we're shopping, of how music affects us and our shopping rhythms and mm. stuff. So I always thought that was really interesting and Plus, I just, I like music. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed that, like, uh, music's been, like, an everyday part of my life. I mean, I listen to different types of music depending on my mood or different ty- or different times of the day, I'd say. And just there's an immense power of music. Like, either it's, like, a relaxing effect or, like, a, like an amping me up or, like, before a workout or something. So it was just cool to see how different types of music relate to different things. Yeah. Uh, my first stumping question now that I thought of it before I forget uh, okay. did you see a recent study that looked at uh, brain activity uh, in relation to size um, Gundam style no uh, I don't think I tweeted it out uh, I did <laughs> see it on Twitter uh, so apparently some researchers looked at the difference between listening to Gundam style for 45 minutes versus some other song uh, for, for, for 45 minutes and they found differences in brain activity, I think related to like pleasure reward during Gangnam Style versus this other piece of, of music. That would drive me insane. Yeah, I, I mean, the reason I saw it posted was I think because everyone had been talking about how poorly designed of a study and like how did this get published anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but I just thought it was funny kind of looking at uh, music and its effect on our brains. Uh, thinking about, uh, so bringing up research, uh, has there been any really interesting uh, findings that you found in your research so far? Uh, it's more on the psychological side. Mm-hmm. I'd say that learning how like music actually like starts off at the ear and then like is interpreted by certain parts of the brain. I don't know for sure, but it starts off at the ear and it's processed by the brain and then just goes to actually music is involved with all four main parts of the brain or the four lobes of the brain. So it's very unique where our mind could be doing one thing, but our whole brain is active when listening to music. Um, I thought the Mozart effect was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, just how mu- listening to more classical and calming music can help with your memory and studying and stuff. Because I listened to movie soundtracks when I studied, and I didn't actually think it was helping. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was because I didn't like silence. So Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think uh, that we're starting to find that uh, music can be used to not only... Um, put us in certain moods but kind of enhance those those moods as well so i mean certain people might have like breakup songs uh or you know songs that just like when they're feeling bad they listen to them um i know for me uh it's black by pearl jam um, <laughs> that uh there was a time t- times in my life where uh i've not been in good places and then that song comes on and it just like tears me down uh, and i just fall apart but- that's one of the unique things that I found about music about with uh, all four lobes of the brain being processed. It's memories or like related memories, like the biggest thing. Like I know when I listen to a certain song, like, oh, that reminds me of that situation. Mm-hmm. Or, like I'll listen to a song and the radio be like, hey, change it, I don't like it because mm-hmm. like it just has like association of bad or good memories, which is triggered through just notes and stuff being recognized in our brains and mm-hmm. being able to comprehend it. Yeah, yeah, there's, uh, I'm trying to, th- I don't have any, good songs off the top of my head. Oh yeah, the one that I brought up in class. Uh, so during your presentation you talked, or I think I brought up uh, what's a song that is tied to like you can time travel back in time to that particular memory. Mm-hmm. And it was um, Macklemore's Can't Stop Us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, like if that comes on, like I'm transported up to middle of nowhere, Iowa uh, <laughs> at this campground uh, singing that song, karaoke, with the <laughs> other people that we were there with. S- scaring the other campers. <laughs> I feel yeah. Yeah, uh, and so kind of looking at, at um, the research still, is there anything that seems like really confusing about understanding music and its, its effect on our stress levels or um, our being? One thing that I couldn't really find a straight answer is just why we 
we like certain music and we don't like other music. We, basically, like why we have certain preferences yeah. over other types of music than compared to others. And I want to know a little bit about that about the in our presentation, just about like personality or like aesthetics to like the performer and stuff like that, or like even just personal preference. But there's a lot more to it than just that. I mean, like just the breaking down of music and notes and stuff of like four four measures and stuff like that is just all preference and it's really hard to decipher and figure out like what exactly like why mm -hmm. I prefer certain music over others yeah like why I prefer Elvis Presley to like Tupac I, I don't understand mm -hmm. why that one is appealing to me and one isn't yeah yeah I, I don't know my best venture would be that there's Music is so t intimately tied to certain experiences mm -hmm. so with the people that uh, are surrounded you or and the um, experiences that you've had previously that uh, kind of help build these term certain feelings or attitudes towards uh, different types of music. Uh, like I can think of music that my friends recommended to me like in high school and middle school uh, and like uh, going uh, down those rabbit holes of um, just loving that kind of music getting in phases mm -hmm. and stuff yeah i i think i've been through every music phase one can go through <laughs> it's funny how your taste in music changes or like changes as you progress through life or what you're actually feeling like i can't listen to country music in the winter because it's all about drinking or hanging out in the back of the truck on sunny at 75 and it's gloomy out right now and mm -hmm. you gotta be in a certain mood for everything just like how memories are associated I guess I also am curious to know why certain songs become classic mm -hmm. and why, I mean, no one really, Sweet Caroline, everybody knows that song. Yeah. But why is that considered a classic? Like, I can understand certain songs like Bohemian Rhapsody and stuff, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, no one really goes out of their way to listen to Don't Stop Believing by Journey, but you know once that comes on, you're like, oh yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. about to go down. <laughs> so I wonder, I always wonder why some songs are just universally accepted as like, this is a great song, this mm -hmm. brings yeah. people together. Yeah, and You could sing every single word to that song, and I can't remember what I ate for breakfast this morning, but yeah. I remember every single lyric to every song that I've listened to that I like at least, so mm -hmm. it's weird. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know that anyone knows the answer to that, or if they do, uh, they're making a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> that, that one Swedish uh, producer that uh, is like behind like all of the uh, biggest hits in the last like mm -hmm. 15 to 20 years, he might be the closest person to answer what why he, you can make something classic. Yeah, I just, I think that's really, I think it's interesting that, I mean, wedding songs, mm -hmm. why did, like, Chicken shout... Dance? Oh. Yeah, chicken dance, <laughs> shout. Um, I don't know the hustle. Do people do hustle? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, electric um, slide. Yeah, or like <laughs> yeah. the twist. No, the, not the electric slide. The other one. Cha cha like, slide. Yeah. Yeah, or the cupid <laughs> shuffle and stuff. Like why? That's at every every wedding. Yeah. But why is that like such a wedding song? I I don't I don't understand. <laughs> I feel like for many of those ones, it's, it's somehow alcohol, uh, like. That's true. Just like unlocks mm. the appreciation for certain songs. That's true. Once I get some alcohol in me, I know I can hit that note in, at the end of Bohemian Rhapsody. So mm -hmm. I feel you. <laughs> yeah. Something about the 80s and uh, alcohol songs. Yeah. The 80s had a lot. Yeah. Of like classic songs. Yeah, John Mellencamp songs. And, oh. oh, yeah. Um, but uh, kind of uh, starting to wrap up are there things uh, so in your uh, one page thing you had some local things what are what are some kind of places where people can appreciate music in, in Dubuque um there are a lot of places there are coffee shops Inspire Cafe down in the Millwork districts I think it's called mm -hmm. um they always have an open mic or they have um little concerts going on the lift is one I mentioned um the lift has live music almost every night, I want to say. And it's also, not, also known as the broken lift? Or, or the busted lift, busted yeah, lift, yeah. The busted lift. But um, it's right under Vinnie Venucci's. And yeah, it's kind of tricky to get in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can. There's a back entrance, and then mm -hmm. there's the front entrance. But the back entrance is a lot easier yeah. to get in. But um, sometimes during the week, it's they most likely don't have a cover. Mm -hmm. And... It's they have all kinds of music. I yeah. mean, 
I once saw a guy rap about video games, and it was awesome. And then the next day, I saw a folk band. So um, it's all sorts of music, really appreciative. Um, it's local and people travel. Mm-hmm. So I would say the Busted Lift is definitely a main yeah, main place. Or um, the a lot of bars mm-hmm. have open mic nights, karaoke nights. Yeah. Dog House. Dog House, yeah. Um, Skinny McGinnies has Wednesday night. Wednesday night karaoke. karaoke. Well, see you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's um, always a good time. It is always a good time. <laughs> uh, and then also the casinos bring in kind of larger acts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, larger venues. If you've ever heard of Here Come the Mummies, mm-hmm. they're really good. <laughs> um, they're kind of like a Latin dance band, sort okay. of. They dress up as mummies, and okay. it's a lot of horns and everything. It's a really yeah. good time. They're coming... March 29th. All right. <laughs> so, or March, yeah, March 29th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then also, if people are willing to travel a little bit farther, uh, up in Lancaster, uh, Wisconsin, there's a barn. Uh, it's actually owned by a per- Platteville professor. Oh, cool. Uh, and, and his wife. And then over in uh, Illinois, kind of outside Galena, uh, there's a couple of uh, just like, uh, you know, like roadside joints or uh, what are they? Roadhouses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that are pretty fun. Yeah, I really enjoy live music, so mm-hmm. I try to see as many as I can. Yeah. All right, so the last question, sometimes a, a stumper, uh, is if there's any kind of like fads or products or recommendations you have for any of the dozens of listeners. Um, like recommendations for music or? Completely uh, open. Um, I would say just try to broaden your music taste a little bit Mm -hmm. so if you find yourself listening to one genre um try maybe just going on pandora and skipping around seeing just experimenting with different types of music and don't knock it till you try it Mm -hmm. or um a really good thing i would say is go see something live Mm -hmm. a genre you don't usually listen to because sometimes live can change your opinion about it instead of just listening to it Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say just be open-minded about new types of music. I mean, don't be ashamed if you like instrumentals or like you like rap or something like that. Or mm-hmm. music is unique, and just be open to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'll throw in the Discover Weekly playlist on Spotify as uh, a good way to kind of capture new mm-hmm. music, mm-hmm. Uh, especially if you're actually using the thumbs up, thumbs down things yeah. for yeah. The things that you're on there. Uh, so other than that, I don't think I have much. Uh, just so thanks for coming. Awesome, thank you. Thank you.